If you are looking for an intellectually honest treatment of the creation-evolution debate, don't see Genesis Paradise Lost. This movie is no more than a pooling of antiquated, debunked creationist arguments mixed with some admittedly attractive graphics and landscapes. The movie featured a cast of clowns from Ken Ham to Ray Comfort to Georgia Purdom to Bodie Hodge to David Menton to Danny Faulkner, as well as some lesser-known creationists, including the emphatic Charles Jackson. They spewed forth quite a lot of words on a number of topics ranging from biology to astronomy to anthropology without ever actually providing any useful information, all the while slipping in creationist arguments lovingly ripped from Duane Gish, Kent Hovind, and the staff at Answers in Genesis. They pulled common tropes regarding the alleged equal number of facts that evolutionists and creationists have, how Christianity is so persecuted in America, how there are no transitional fossils, how there is a certain number of kinds while never defining what a kind is, and many more. Whatever data they did abysmally attempt to evaluate, they would gingerly touch it and run. This was evident in their treatment of Mary Schweitzer's research. She is well known for having discovered a few microns worth of preserved proteins, soft tissues, and cell remnants in a Tyrannosaurus femur fossil. Her research indicates that iron particles may have helped preserve the samples. Creationists, however, have heinously misrepresented her work by claiming she proved dinosaur fossils are less than 10,000 years old, not millions. Of course, neither she nor any of the other researchers involved consider that a likely conclusion, since it contradicts almost the entirety of paleontology as well as a variety of other sciences. And, to make this a crusade for creationism, the stalwart Christians had to dodge the fact that the molecular similarities of the Tyrannosaurus remains are incredibly similar to those of modern birds, showing once again that birds are dinosaurs. Creationists will, of course, not tell you this part. The ancient age of the Earth is similarly well substantiated, but creationists want their audience to think the foundation of dating methods is not but hot air. In reality, something creationists aren't on a first-name basis with, there are many methods of dating objects, not merely radiometric. Relative dates work very well, utilizing index fossils, which are certain fossils that only appear in certain strata, and it is worth noting that index fossils wouldn't exist if a global flood happened. Other relative dating methods include farves, snow ice cycles, and tree rings. However, Absolute dating methods exist, most popularly in the form of radiometric dating, and these provide great insights into our Earth's past. In Genesis Paradise Lost, the creationists mention carbon dating repeatedly, which only works for the fairly recent past, up to around 50,000 years ago or so, but they passingly mention the methods for dating older materials, including uranium lead and potassium argon dating. These are great, but there also exists samarium neodymium, rubidium strontium, uranium thorium, and rhenium osmium dating, as well as a host of other radiometric methods. Then, in typical creationist fashion, all the methods were brushed off with a simple, were you there? The creationists also fielded the possibility, maybe heat or electricity affects the rate of decay. Sure, while it's possible that temperature, pressure, the chemical environment, magnetism, or electricity may affect nuclear decay rates, Many decades of arduous work by numerous physicists and chemists, which the movie didn't even acknowledge, have shown that this concern is unmerited. The creationists also ignored the various methods of cross-checking samples. For carbon-14 dating alone, the age of a, say, dead tree can be compared against how many rings the tree has. That's how we know some trees are older than the creationists say the universe is, such as Sweden's old Tycho. And, even older, a living colony of the clonal plant Posidonia oceanica is around 100,000 years old. For ancient absolute dating methods, using multiple methods to test the same sample will yield greater accuracy than using just one. But creationists won't tell you about this either. There are even non-radiometric dating methods for the distant past, so they don't require a knowledge of parent-daughter isotope ratios in the sample, including thermoluminescence, electron spin resonance, and cosmic ray exposure dating. Up to this point, you should be detecting a pattern. 
creationists make claims that sound as though science supports their side, but then they completely ignore any and all data contrary to their position. Most of the time, however, they are blissfully unaware of this fact, which is why they constantly assert that both creationists and evolutionists look at the same facts. They say that we both have the same fossils, same rocks, same trees, etc., but that we only draw different conclusions about the data due to our presuppositions. They say that creationists presuppose God, while evolutionists presuppose atheistic materialism, even if many evolutionists are in fact Christians. Thus, this trope of equal data is a wholly creationist invention meant to make laypeople think that creationists are just as correct as evolutionists. However, it is nothing but a lie. From the two topics we've covered, Mary Schweitzer's research and dating the past, we've already seen how forthcoming creationists are with the facts. If we didn't do any research ourselves, which is what creationists are hoping for, then the matter would seem to be settled, right? Creationism would seem to be in the right, but this is a demonstrable fallacy. R.J. Downard in his blog, Troubles in Paradise, has shown that creationists consistently ignore or avoid upwards of 90% of the available relevant technical data, and many of his findings regarding this fact have been recorded in his book, Evolution Slam Dunk. But don't take our words for it, see for yourself. Go to any place where creationists are making claims about how some part of science supports creationism and you'll discover this quickly. Let's have a test case. Creationists claim that oil can naturally form rapidly, especially during the global flood. Creationist geologist Andrew Snelling discusses this in a 1990s article he wrote titled How Fast Can Oil Form? to defend the notion of a recent earth, since it's well known among geologists that oil doesn't form quickly naturally. That didn't deter him, though, and he cites sources claiming that scientists have created oil in the lab. As it happens, that much is true. Scientists have been able to create oil in the lab. But as Snelling's own source points out, this is nothing like natural oil. Snelling cites the 1984 paper, Petroleum Generation, Simulation Over Six Years of Hydrocarbon Formation from Torbanite and Brown Coal in a Subsiding Basin, that says, quote, the products differ in many respects from natural hydrocarbons, close quote. Now, how can you wave an artificial product that is totally different from the natural product as evidence that the natural product can form quickly? Here, he seems to be hoping that you won't check his own sources. So that's really about it. Creationists will claim that they look at exactly the same evidence as everyone else, but when you actually investigate their work, the truth is the opposite. As long as you investigate the source bases of creationists, you'll see this pattern. Everywhere from Tyrannosaur soft tissue to radiometric dating to oil formation. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.